Stinty Jack was a miserable old drunk who loved playing tricks on anyone and everyone. One dark Halloween night, Jack ran into the devil himself in a local public house. Jack tricked the devil by offering, by offering his soul in exchange for one last drink. The devil quickly turned himself into a sixpence to pay the bartender. But Jack immediately snatched the coin and deposited it into his pocket next to a silver cross that he was carrying. Thus, the devil could not change himself back and Jack refused to allow the devil to go free until the devil had promised not to claim Jack's soul for ten years. The devil agreed and ten years later Jack again came across the devil while out walking on a country walk. The devil tried collecting what he was due, but Jack, thinking quickly, said, I'll go, but before I do, will you get me an apple from that tree? The devil, thinking he had nothing to lose, jumped up into the tree to retrieve an apple. As soon as he did, Jack placed crosses all around the trunk of the tree, thus trapping the devil once again. This time, Jack made the devil promise that he would not take his soul when he finally died. Seeing no way around this predicament, the devil grudgingly agreed. When Stingy Jack eventually passed away several years later, he went to the gates of heaven, but was refused entrance because of his life of drinking and because he had been so tight-fisted and deceitful. So Jack then went down to hell to see the devil and find out whether it were possible to gain entrance into the depths of hell. But the devil kept the promise that had been made to Jack years earlier and would not let him enter. But where can I go? asked Jack. Back to where you came from, replied the devil. The way back was windy and very dark. Stingy Jack pleaded with the devil to at least provide him with a light to help find his way. The devil, as a final gesture, tossed Jack an ember straight from the fires of hell. Jack placed the ember in a hollowed heart turnip. One of Jack's favorite foods, which he always carried around with him whenever he could steal one. From that day forward. Stingy Jack has been doomed to roam the earth without a resting place and with only his lit turnip to light the way in the darkness. Once upon a time, there were two sisters who were as like each other as two peas in a pot. But one was good and the other was bad-tempered. Now their father had no work, so the girls began to think of going to service. I, I will go first and see what I can make of it, said the younger sister ever so cheerfully. Then you, sis, can follow if I have good luck. So she packed up a bundle, said goodbye, and started to find a place. But no one in the town wanted a girl, and she went farther afield into the country. And as she journeyed, she came upon an oven in which a lot of loaves were baking. Now as she passed, the loaves cried out with one voice. Little girl, little girl, take us out. Please, take us out. We have been baking for seven years, and no one has come to take us out. Do take us out, or we shall soon be burnt. Then, being a kind, obliging little girl, she stopped, put down her bundle, took out the bread, and went on her way, saying, You will be more comfortable now. 
After a time she came to a cow lowing beside an empty pail, and the cow said to her, Little girl, little girl, milk me, please milk me. Seven years have I been waiting, but no one has come to milk me. So the kind girl stopped, put down her bundle, milked the cow into the pail, and went on her way, saying, Now you will be more comfortable. By and by, she came to an apple tree so laden with fruit that its branches were nigh to break, and the apple tree called to her, Little girl, little girl, please check my branches. The fruit is so heavy I can't stand straight. Then the kind girl stopped, put down her bundle, and shook the branches so the apples fell off and the tree could stand straight. Then she went on her way, saying, You will be more comfortable now. So she journeyed on till she came to a house where an old witch woman lived. Now this witch woman wanted a servant maid and promised good wages. Therefore the girl agreed to stop with her and try how she liked service. She had to sweep the floor, Keep the house clean and tidy, the fire bright and cheery. But there was one thing the witch woman said she must never do, and that was look up the chimney. If you do, said the witch woman, something will fall down on you and you will come to a bad end. Well, the girl swept and dusted and made up the fire but never a penny of wages did she see. Now the girl wanted to go home, as she did not like witch service, for the witch used to have boiled babies for supper and bury the bones under some stones in the garden. But she did not like to go home penniless, so she stayed on, sweeping and dusting and doing her work just as if she was pleased. Then one day, as she was sweeping up the arse, down tumbled some soot, and without remembering she was forbidden to look up the chimney, she looked up to see where the soot came from, and lo and behold, a big bag of gold fell plump into her lap. Now the witch happened to be hot on one of her witch errands, though the girl thought it a fine opportunity to be off home. So she kilted up her petticoats and started to run home, but she had only gone a little way when she heard the witch woman coming after her on her broomstick. Now the apple tree she had helped to stand straight happened to be quite close, so she ran to it and cried, Apple tree, apple tree, hide me, so the old witch can find me. For if she does, she'll pick my bones and bury me under the garden stones. Then the apple tree said, Of course I will. You helped me to stand straight. And one good turn deserves another. So the apple tree hid her finally in its green branches. And when the witch flew past, saying, Tree of mine, O oh tree of mine, have you seen my naughty little maid? With a winny winny wag and a great big bag, she's stolen my money, all I had. The apple tree answered, No, mother dear, not for seven years. So the witch flew on the wrong way, and the girl got down, thanked the tree politely, and started again. But just as she got to where the cow was standing beside the pail, she heard the witch coming again. So she ran to the cow and cried, Cow, cow, please hide me, so the witch can find me. If she does, she'll pick my bones and bury me under the garden stones. Certainly I will, answered the cow. Didn't you milk me and make me comfortable? 
hide yourself behind me and you'll be quite safe. And when the witch flew by and called to the cow, Oh, cow of mine, cow of mine, have you seen my naughty little maid with a willy willy wag and a great big bag who stole my money, all that I had? She just said politely, No, mother dear, not for seven years. Then the old witch went on in the wrong direction, and the girl started afresh on her way home. But just as she got to where the oven stood, she heard that horrid old witch coming behind her again. So she ran as fast as she could to the oven and cried, Oh, oven, oven, hide me, so as the witch can find me. For if she does, she'll pick my bones and bury them under the garden stones. Then the oven said, I am afraid there is no room for you, as another batch of bread is baking. But there is a baker. Ask him. So she asked the baker, and he said, Of course I will. You saved my last batch from being burnt. So run into the bakehouse. You will be quite safe here, and I will settle the witch for you. So she hid in the bakehouse, only just in time, for there was the old witch calling angrily. Oh, man of mine, man of mine, have you seen my naughty little maid, with a willy willy wag and a great big bag, who stole my money, all I had? Then the baker replied, Look in the oven. She may be there. And the witch alighted from her broomstick and peered into the oven. But she could see no one. Creep in and look in the farthest corner, said the beggar slyly. And the witch crept in. When... Bang! He shut the door in her face. And there she was roasting. And when she came out with the bread, she was all crisp and brown, and had to go home as best she could and put gold cream all over her. But the kind, obliging little girl got safe home with her bag of money. Now the ill-tempered elder sister was very jealous of his good luck, and determined to get a bag of gold for herself. So she, in her turn, packed up a bundle and started to seek service by the same road. But when she came to the oven, and the loaves begged her to take them out because they had been baking for seven years and were nigh to burning, she tossed her head and said, A likely story indeed, that I should burn my fingers to save your crusts. No, thank you. And with that she went on till she came across the cow, standing waiting to be milked beside the pail. But when the cow said, Little girl, little girl, milk me, please milk me, I've waited seven years to be milked. She only laughed and replied, You may wait another seven years for all I care, I'm not your dairy maid. And with that she went on till she came to the apple tree, all over burned by its fruit. But when it begged her to shake its branches, she only giggled, and plucking one ripe apple, said, One is enough for me. You can keep the rest yourself. And with that she went on munching the apple till she came to the witch woman's house. Now the witch woman though she had got over being crisp and brown from the oven, was dreadfully angry with all little maid servants, and made up her mind this one should not trick her. So for a long time she never went out of the house. Thus the ill-tempered sister never had a chance of looking up the chimney, as she had meant to do at once. And she had to dust and clean, and brush, and sweep ever so hard, until she was quite tired out.
But one day, when the witch woman went into the garden to bury our bones, she seized the moment, looked up the chimney, and, sure enough, a bag of gold fell plump into her lap. Well, she was off with it in a moment, and ran, and ran till she came to the apple tree when she heard the witch woman behind her. So she cried, as her sister had done, Apple tree, apple tree, hide me, so the old witch can find me, for if she does, she'll break my bones, or bury me under the garden stones. But the apple tree said, No room here, I've too many apples. So she had to run on, and when the witch woman on her broomstick came flying by and called, Oh, tree of mine, tree of mine, have you seen a naughty little maid with a willy willy wag and a great big bag who stolen my money, all I had? The apple tree replied, Yes, mother dear, she's gone down there. Then the witch woman went after her, caught her, gave her a thorough good beating, took the bag of money away from her, and sent her home without a penny payment for all her dusting and sweeping and brushing and cleaning. I am off down the road, where the fairy lanterns glowed, and the little dark pretty flitter mice are flying, a slender band of grey, it runs creepingly away, and the edges and the grasses are sighing, the air is full of winds and of blundering bitter things that warn me with their rearing and their humming, oh I hear the tiny horns, of enchanted leprechauns and the padding feet of many gnomes that call me. Oh, the lights, oh, the glints, oh, the little twinkly sounds, oh, the rustle of their noiseless little robes, oh, the echo of their feet, of their little happy feet, oh, the swinging lamps in the little starry globes. I must follow in their train down the crooked fairy lane, where the cunning rabbits long ago have gone, and where silvery they think in a moving moonlit ring, all a twinkle with the jewels they have on. They are fading round the turn where the glow warms palely burn, and the echo of their padding feet is dying. Oh, it's knocking at my heart. Let me go, let me start. For the little magic house are all a flying. Oh, the warmth, oh, the hum, oh, the colors in the dark, oh, the gauzy wings of golden honey flies, oh, the music of their feet, of their dancing goblin feet, oh, the magic, oh, the sorrow when it dies.